Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, my name is Raven and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Warriors Den that just happened last night. And just as expected, it was a goddamn big one. We got the names of the brand new heroes, we got a sneak peek at them and a little bit into what their playstyle is. We got a look at the brand new maps, and we got a whole bunch of news on half of the defensive meta patch that's coming pretty damn soon. I am super fucking excited for this, so we're going to go through all of these changes. And first of all, we're going to get all the new stuff out of the way, so the defensive meta patch and the stuff about the dedicated servers, then we're going to dive into the heroes. Now first of all, all dedicated servers i've seen lots of people talking about dedicated servers and i've seen lots of people asking are we going to get them this season are we going to get them this season guys it's not going to happen okay the bare minimum we're going to get this is probably at the ass end of december maybe at the start of january i'm tipping though at the end of february because this season's supposed to go all the way through to february so if we look at it logically okay they want to basically get everything set in stone so defensive meta stuff they want to get a new hero settled in this season and then next year when they start year two one of the big things that they're going to want to draw people back into the game that have left is going to be dedicated servers and what better way to get people coming back to the game than hey here we go guys we're going into year two and here is dedicated service to kick everything off so realistically i think they're going to put in maybe a couple of things to sort of like make the transition easier this season at the arse end of it and then after this season ends start of next year so about february ish they're going to implement dedicated servers for the start of the next bunch of seasons if they do do it sooner like the whole dedicated server thing in if they put it in this season i will be very very fucking surprised but I also won't be opposed to it and now we're gonna get into a bunch of the actual defensive meta changes that are coming soon Okay, and there are some goddamn big ones in here, which I'm super excited for now The first one is the dodge roll stamina cost has been increased from 40 to 50 and dodge rolling no longer has a guard break defense Okay, so you can get guard broken while you're rolling So that is the first big one and the second big one that's happening is critical HP regen has been removed Holy shit, I've been waiting for this one for a very long time. So whenever you guys get to low HP, you know how, you know, you're on a sliver of health, everyone just runs away and then they, you know, their health regens back up and then they come back in. Some people like that because they're like, it's defensive strategic fighting. It's a load of shit. If you're on low health, you should stay on low health. No one regenerates. That's like a shooting mechanic, not a fucking forerunner mechanic, fighting game mechanic. And the devs said that as well. They've gone, it's sort of this mechanic that they, they had in the game early on. And for some reason, it just stuck through the whole thing. They finally got rid of it. So now when you're on low health, you are on low health and you're going to stay there no matter how much health you have left you're not going to regen back up so that is a really big change the next one is that dodge rolling can now be used to avoid traps and pretty much every single character has had some sort of like you know bug fixes some more than others but pretty much everyone's been fixed in some sort of way and here is one that is a little bit crazy Lordbring has received some range buffs to their top heavy attacks and top heavy finishes i don't know why they're giving the guy like you know extra range Lordbring is in a really good place right now but they feel the need to buff him so why not i'm all up for a buffed up lore daddy now nabushi's blissful rest feat has been replaced with second wind apparently blissful rest was either too good or too bad with little middle ground in between so you know it was just too hard for them balancing it so they just got rid of it and replaced it with second wind and now the next one is a really big one as well so on all of your feats pretty much all of them except for a few which i'm going to list but normally whenever you do it you have this uninterruptible sort of like stance thing okay but now what they've done is they've removed the uninterruptible stance thing on all of the feats except for the following so Second Wind, Stonewall Banner, Juggernaut, and Champion's Aura still retain the uninterruptible property. But for everything else, it no longer has that uninterruptible property, so be careful when using them. And now one for the Samurai. So Smoke Bombs now deny interactions, including capturing flags and zones. That is going to be fucking annoying on every goddamn Shinobi. And Orochis too. Them just dropping those Smoke Bombs on a point and just going, suck shit. And now one that I think a lot of people have been asking for. I really didn't care that much about it, but now you can equip four executions at once so yeah that's a thing um they said that you can you know go for a couple of quick ones and some longer ones uh you know if you have no one around you, you can just sit there and really taunt the guy that you're about to kill or if there's enemies around you can just go for a nice quick one and then you know move on so that is a thing Jewels as well are now a forfeit when the opponent rage quits. You no longer have to go against bots. That one is really cool. I don't know why that wasn't in since the beginning, but it's good that it's in now. If you're someone that plays with friends as well, leaving a duel through exiting into group invite will now hit you with a matchmaking penalty. Now on the Sentinel map, they also changed the ballista camera. Okay, so you know before how it was really fucking weird how, you know, you jump on the ballista and if you had an ornament, it would block your like line of sight and you would be able to see where the fuck you're shooting. Now that's gone. It's all first person now, so that way you can actually 
actually see where you're shooting and you're not going to be blocked by your guy standing there with his big ornament on his head. Next up, a small change but a good one. The blinking bar on out of stamina is now back. So that way everyone has an indicator of what's going on. And this one is going to be a very welcome change. Now, when you're in matchmaking, you can customize your hero. This was in dual tournaments and it's now in all modes. I am so goddamn happy they've put this in, especially because it takes so long to get into games nowadays that just sitting there staring at nothing, just a screen doing nothing is so fucking boring. At least let me do shit. Once again, should have been into the start of the game. Happy it's in now. Now, there are some more like, you know, minor changes and stuff, but those are pretty much the big ones that I, I saw there and some of the ones I'm excited for. And they say when it comes to the defensive meta patch, this is only the first half. Later on, they're going to be looking at parry and that whole mess. So once we get up to that, we'll see what they do to change it and to fix that thing because the parry is pretty much one of the biggest parts of the defensive meta and it needs to be addressed. They're going to be addressing it later, which is really good, but we're going to have to wait for that. Now, as for when the next season is going to start, if you own the season pass, okay, you're going to be able to access these brand new heroes on November the 14th. And then, of course, after that first week, everyone else gets access to the new heroes on November the 21st. So now that we have the start date for the next season, we're going to be talking about the brand new maps and the brand new heroes because I'm goddamn excited. Now, first of all, let's jump into the maps. Now, the first one is a Viking themed map and it's called the Gauntlet. And the Gauntlet map is available in every single mode. And this thing looks pretty goddamn cool when you very first get to the entrance of it. There's these two giant skulls. It's very Viking themed and it's like, you know, lots of paths and everything, lots of mountain ranges. It sort of like looks like it's a bit vertical, which is quite cool. It looks really nice and I can't wait to play on it. And the next new map is called Market town okay so if you played the campaign it's sort of like the Erosha campaign where you're playing through and there's like those multi levels and zip lines and everything it's pretty much just that place ported over into the multiplayer part of the game now so it is samurai themed and it is in every single map except for Dominion and I really fucking hate that they do this they did the same thing with the Viking village and it shits me to tears because I love the look of these maps and I want to be able to play on all of them I don't know why they keep locking it off to certain modes it kind of sucks but the market town does look really goddamn cool so those are the two brand new maps. We're going to get a longer look at them next week when they release like, you know, the full trailers where they show us every single part of the map. But for now, we only have these teasers and we get to have a quick look at it, which is quite cool. Now, just quickly, two things I forgot to mention in the first part of the video. One is that there's going to be a 4v4 ranked mode coming to Dominion, so only Dominion. I still think they need to wait till the defensive meta changes are fully implemented, dedicated servers before worrying about rank stuff. But at least, you know what, they get the groundwork in, whatever. It doesn't really phase me. But we are getting a ranked mode for Dominion. And of course, the brand new tribute mode is going to be coming into the game this season. I've already done videos on that, so you can go through and have a look at them if you wish to know more about it. It's basically capture the buff, you know, a very of capture the flag you run around pick up three flags get a buff it's nothing exciting so now we're going to be talking about the brand new heroes we've got a sneak peek of them this week and then we're going to have the full trailers next week so i went into this warriors den thinking that ronin was going to be my main okay i wasn't that hyped about huntress but after seeing these two heroes holy shit i think i'm leaning more towards huntress now they did name them different things okay but they're based off the huntress and the ronin so when it came to the ronin they decided to name him aramusha I, I actually prefer Ronan, but sure, why not? He's Aramusha. And when it came to the Huntress, they decided to name her Shaman. Once again, Huntress is so much cooler. What the hell, guys? But now we have Shaman and Aramusha. And after hearing about their playstyles, I'm kind of leaning more towards uh, the Shaman now because she sounds fucking crazy good. So let's get into some details. Now, both characters are going to be gender locked, okay? So the Shaman is going to be gender locked to female and the Aramusha is going to be gender locked to male. Now, the Shaman is wielding a hand axe and a kukuri, which is a really cool knife. And the Aramusha is wielding, you know, dual katanas, okay? So he's got like the full on, you know, katanas in the sheaths right next to each other and he has the little short ones i've no idea what they're called but he's got these two little daggers and he's got these two katanas and i know someone's gonna say they're not katanas they call something else they're katanas to me leave me alone now the shaman is going to be an assassin hero and the aramusha is going to be a hybrid between a vanguard and a tank okay so a vanguard and a heavy now when they describe the shaman's playstyle, she uses a whole lot of bleeds okay so she has the ability to land bleeds on people she's pretty damn quick they said she uses lots of fast light chains which means another peacekeeper and I bet all the console people are gonna love hearing that and Roman said this really awesome thing where apparently once she puts bleeds on someone she has this weird finishing move where she jumps on them and eats their face that sounds fucking cool but it also sounds like the centurion where he knocks you onto your ass and then goes flying through the air and puts you into a cutscene sounds like she's gonna be putting you into a cutscene too and for the record Roman really fucking loved the huntress so that might be his new favorite and yes I just called her the huntress it's shaman I'm never I, I can't get over that okay huntress is so much cooler 
Sola. So the Shaman to me sounds like a mix between Peacekeeper and Centurion, okay? Now from what they've said, she's going to have fast light attacks. She's going to have the ability to land blades on people. It sounded like he said after you land a heavy, you can land a light attack for a blade. Some people were thinking it's sort of like Peacekeeper though, where you can cancel your heavy into a blade. I'm not sure which one it is. From what I heard, he said that once you land a heavy, you can land a light attack for a blade. We'll have to see which one it pans out to be. We'll find out next week. But you can expect those fast light attacks and you can expect a bunch of blades as well. Now, when it comes to the whole diving on them and eating their face thing, I'm curious to see where that's going to be unblockable. I'm putting my money down on that being unblockable and I'm also really curious to see if it does put you into like a mini cutscene thing as she eats your face. Sort of like the Centurion where he dives on you. It is going to be really interesting to see if they do that again considering all the backlash they got for giving the Centurion a freaking cutscene. But she's going to be quick. She's going to be annoying. She's going to be bleeding you and I think she's going to be a better version of the Peacekeeper which I'm all for. And next up we're going to be talking about the Aramusha. So the way they describe the Aramusha is he's a guy who uses lots of infinite combos and mix-ups. And to me he sounds like a version of the Berserker and the Kensei. Now of course the Berserker has lots of infinite combos and the Kensei has to use lots of mix-ups in order to get anything done. Now you can say that's because the Kensei is incredibly underpowered but at the same time both characters with the Berserker and the Kensei need to use tons of mix-up. So he sounds like he's going to be a better version of the two of them. Now he does have some differences in the way he plays okay so he does have a full block stance like the Warlord and the other tanks except apparently it doesn't he can't just sit in this full block stance for ages he has to do it on reaction okay but when he does manage to block something using his full block stance apparently he gets to do a whole bunch of damage or some really awesome combo off of that sort of like a, a reflection thing it'll be really interesting to see how that pans out and how that actually works I'm thinking it might be a tank version of the deflect but we're gonna have to wait and see now another thing about the Aramusha is when you attack twice in the same direction you can then do this really empowered finisher as well in the same direction most likely going to be unblockable so it looks like the Aramusha is going to be all about setting people up with you know mix-ups and feints and and starting up infinite combos and cancelling stuff halfway through in order to land your damage and of course he's going to have that weird reflection tank guard thing which we're going to have to look at as well so it seems like he's going to be the more technical hero and of course the shaman is going to be the more peacekeeper light spammy going to fuck you up type hero but they both look really goddamn cool and I'm super excited to play both of them but I am currently leaning a little bit more towards the shaman just because I'm really curious in the whole jumping on them and biting their face off type thing that sounds fun to me and I cannot wait to see the full trailers for these guys next week and then get my hands on them the week after now keep in mind I will be doing my guides for the shaman and the Aramusha like always in the first week that the characters drop so do keep an eye out for those and so far season 4 is shaping up to be a goddamn awesome season there is a lot of stuff here that's going to be coming to the game that's going to be changing the game drastically and it's all leading up into the next year of For Honor. So hopefully they don't fuck anything up this time and they get everything solid and sorted now. So that way we can move into the year two of For Honor without all this bullshit and hopefully we can get some players coming back so that way you know we're not sitting in queue for ages or we're not just versing the same people over and over again. But nonetheless it is a very exciting time right now to be a content creator and of course to be a player for For Honor because we're getting brand new shit. But that is all I have for this video so thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and please let me know your thoughts. What do you think about the Shaman and what do you think about the Aramusha? And please tell me what you think about the brand new maps and all these defensive meta changes as well. You guys know I always love hearing from you all. And please share this video around. It does help me out a fuck ton. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. I shall see you all in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Eat.